All right, today I'm here with Curtis Hicks from Unita. Curtis has been um, in the business for over 20 years, abrasive business. And I want, you know, Curtis, just, you know, to walk us through, give us a little bit of um, some tips and tricks, you know, what abrasives we should be sure. doing. And so I think you're going to talk about um, cloth, paper, and film and kind of walk us through that and give us some advice on what we should be using. So sure. we got some samples and um, just give us a little bit of your background too, Curtis. Yeah, I, well, I've been in the abrasive business for 30 years. Um, um, started out in coated, which this is considered coated. Uh, then I went for a couple of years into the shape of wheel business, which it all ties in. Shape of wheels are like a, a fiber type wheel that will mold and, and actually start shaping to a, a product. Like it's big in where they're manufacturing trim and stuff like that. They're feeding this in, it shapes and sands that. And then 20 years ago, I uh, went to work with Unita, so I've been here 20 years now. And that got me back into the, the coated aspect of the business. We have cloth, paper, and film. And, you know, um, so we got Film Tech. I'm from Anita. We've got EchoStorm. And I'm not sure what the cloth is called, but can you just um, give our viewers just mm -hmm. a little bit of advice and um, kind of some technical background about these three products and what you should be using and why? Sure. Yeah, I like to talk about cloth because I think a lot of people tend to use it when they probably shouldn't. So just a quick 101 on it is cloth is a, is a really good product for longevity. Nothing's going to outlast it because of the durability of the cloth. The problem with cloth, though, is that you can't see it looking at it, but it's just like a pair of jeans. It's woven. So every time a thread goes over another thread, you're creating a little bump. And you know how sanding is. Anything you do, it'll, it'll feed right through and, and show up on the part. So although you're getting good longevity out of this, the finish typically isn't real good. So really for what your customer base is doing, I wouldn't really recommend cloth for too many applications. But as far as longevity, you can't beat it. Now, when you come to finishing, paper has traditionally been the best product to use because now you're coating the abrasive grain onto a nice flat press surface. Problem with paper is if you're doing edge work, things like that, you tend to tear it. Right. To me, the greatest thing that came out, and it's, you know, it's, it's the most it's gone back a while now, but it's the most newest innovation when it comes to substrates to coat on is film. So film is basically a plastic. But even though paper looks nice and flat, and it is because it's pressed, nothing is flatter than, than the plastic. So to me, this is the best product to use. I know you guys do a lot with film tech because what you're getting out of film, you're getting the best of both worlds. You're getting the longevity typically you'll get out of cloth, but yet the finish out of paper. So you get excellent edge wear, won't tear, but yet you're getting a really nice flat surface to coat to, so you're getting a very good finish. So I think what it really comes down to, and in, in, in the cabinet repainting industry, what we're really after, you know, in somebody's home is a factory-like finish. And, and so I guess what I'm hearing from you, if you want that factory-like finish, an ultra-flat finish, I mean, it starts with an abrasive, I guess, Absolutely. is what it... And all abrasives are, everybody just needs to keep in mind, it's not complicated, it's just a cutting tool. It's no different than a bandsaw blade. It's no different than a router or a shaper. You're simply taking tons and tons of little knives and you're adhering it to a substrate. So when you're cutting things, what do you want to do? You want to run cool because heat is the biggest detriment. Heat is the kryptonite like this to Superman. That's what heat is to sandpaper. Once you heat it up, you start loosening the grains and that's when you start getting shedding and that's when you start loading and a lot of things go wrong. So. In that point, if I had to give anybody any tips about sanding, especially on what, what your customer base is doing, my first advice is don't use too much pressure. If you're using a three inch by four sander or if you're using a five inch sander, just let the weight of that machine do the work. And look, I get it. If I go home and do drywall or something, I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm going to town at it, but I'm creating a lot of friction. So just letting the weight of that sander do the work is, is gonna do the job. These tools are designed to crack and resharpen. That's the term in, in the industry is called friability. Mm -hmm. And that is a major term in our industry. So what that means is your all abrasive grains start out sharp because they're electrostatic coated. So when they're coated, that, that electrostatic, actually the grains come in on the bottom and they flip up and stick to the resin on the top. But because of the electrostatic coating, you're getting the heavy side of that flipping up. So you always have a sharp tip. But where we really, I think, excel is we focus on wood. 75% of our business is wood. So we have some very special grains. So a lot of companies will use a brown aluminum oxide because when that crack, that tip cracks, it's gonna dull. And that's really good for metal. You get better life and it does okay on wood. Nothing wrong with it, it does okay. 
We want our grains constantly, once that tip cracks, we want it to resharpen into two new cutting tools. So even on our aluminum oxides, like that one you have in your hand is a brown AO. So when we start coating for, for products like Film Tech and uh, Echo Storm, we're using uh, aluminum oxides that the, all this stuff's made in a lab, nothing's mined anymore. So we have them manufactured for us where they're, they're more brittle and more friable. So if we're gonna use an 80 grit, we want a brown aluminum oxide because we just want to cut something down. We're not worried about the finish. When we start getting our finished grits, which we consider 150 and above, we start using pink and white aluminum oxides. And they act a more, lot more like a silicon carbide. Silicon carbide by nature is extremely hard, but it's extremely brittle. And you want that, because if you're sanding a seal coat, you don't want to sand through. So you want that cutting tool to crack really easily. Right. And we've done that with aluminum oxide. That's where Ecomont, which is our brand of paper, which you know you need a, is the owner of Ecomont, um, that's where they really have excelled because we focus on wood. Right. In fact, a lot of our metal products, to be honest with you, we actually source some of that material from other sources because our stuff's really not, right. not made for metal. So just um, to get back to you know, the cloth, um, Film Tech, Echostorm, Echostorm's paper, yep. um, Film Tech, and um, th these are your guys' names for your products. Um, it's For me, it's easy to identify Film Tech because it's blue, Echostorm because it's yellow. Um, this is the cloth. You know, how, how does like our viewers, anybody wanting to know, how do I know if this is cloth or not? If I bought it from a different manufacturer, I've, if I went to a, a hardware store, how do I know whether I'm purchasing um, film, paper, or cloth? Is it's probably hard to tell um, unless it gives you that information on the package. Now, cloth you'll always know because it's, it's always gonna be kind of this brown color. And it's usually not sterated, whereas these products are. And what a steration means, like, this is really easy to see because it's still a carbide. You see that white, creamy look to it? Mm -hmm. That goes back to, again, to try to reduce the heat. That's actually almost like, the, the easiest way to describe it's almost like putting a layer of soap on it. Right, right. So, so it does two things. It makes the product run cooler, and it also helps the fibers or anything you're sanding to slide out from in between right. the grains. Now, these are different. This one is a top-sided uh, steration just like that one so that's a after we make the product we come back with a final application and put that on the top the thing I love about film tech I always go back to this because the steration is even better on this because it's done in the resins so you're getting that nice coolant added to it but that'll come off the top a lot easier whereas this stays in the product all the way through the use of the grain um, as far as knowing the difference if I if you had no other way to do it just take it and and do this. Yeah. That's going to tear and this won't. You'll know you got paper instead of film. Yeah, because I know, I, yeah, that's one way I do it. And um, you can take and tear the paper pretty easily. Sure. In the film, it's very difficult to Absolutely. tear. I mean, if you really, uh, you know, torque on it and you're strong enough, you can tear it. Um, it's interesting. The cloth, so is the cloth not terrible? Cloth is very, you can tear it, but it's very difficult so, to tear. Okay. And as far as like, that's a very flexible cloth is what you want to use on wood in case you got any profiles. Yeah, because this, this feels like, it actually just feels like cloth. Yeah. So to me, it feels so different than the paper. And in one way, that's a good so, point. So cloth is very, typically for what you're doing in wood is very flexible. Right. Paper has got a little bit of flex to it for right. sure, but you can definitely feel this, how, how stiff it is in a way. Right. But still has some, you know, has the ability to fold because, or, or to bend and, and, and get contours because it, it just won't crack or anything. Yeah. And I know, like when I first started messing around with abrasives, and you know, this is gonna, um, you know, sound like it's you know pretty elementary, but you know, I started hearing the term um, loading, and um, I had no idea what what loading was and you you brought it up and heat is you know um you know an important factor in successful sanding and keeping the heat down and not loading your abrasive so what the heck is loading anyways loading is simply just what it sounds like and people may not realize they saw it when they did um it, it's when the the fibers or if you're sanding a finish it ends up getting caught in between the coats, in, in between the grains. Yeah. So you got a little bit of space between the grains. The finer you go, the closer you bring those grains together to get a, a better finish. Um, but if they load up, what's gonna happen is eventually it's gonna quit cutting because now the, the loading is higher than the grains. So you're not getting that cut. And, and then it just uh, starts to burn, starts to heat up. 
Yeah, yeah. Because what, what I what I notice, um, like if I'm using film tech and I'm sanding in between coats of like a 2K poly, if I'm putting too much pressure, not just letting the sander do the work and keeping it cool, you'll start to get that 2K poly, whether that's white or whatever. It, it starts to build up, you know, in the abrasive. And as soon as it starts to do that, your abrasive is no longer effective, and you just gotta, um, you know, rip it off and just use another one. So uh, keeping your abrasive cool, letting your sander do the work, you're less likely to load your abrasives. Absolutely. And loading's a big issue for, for refinishing. Um, you know, it's a, a lot of times we see people that tend to go to sand that second coat a little too soon. And that's when at least having some type of, sometimes if, it, if it's not quite cured enough, it's going to load no matter what. Right. But uh, that does help having the, the uh, sterations. And even if you got something that's not quite cured, a lot of times that top side of steration is better. Right. Because it's going to kind of perform a little bit better and not load as quick. I would find that film tech will tend to load a little quicker than what this product would, but the longevity of film tech and the, and the ability of it not to tear, I think is what really makes it the, the best choice. So I think that that's um, kind of a good um, point that you brought up. If you're really trying to push the limits of, you know, um, recoding, you know, and trying to do that faster than what you should be doing before the, the coating is actually cured, maybe EchoStorm might be a better option if you're trying to push those limits. I think EchoStorm is a good option um, because of that top side of steration. You know, it's one of those things with sandpaper, you kind of have to trial and error, yeah. see what works better for you. But, you know, I think the key with sanding, first of all, you want to really reduce the pressure. Even if you're sanding by hand, try not to, to lay into it. You know, and if it's a machine, let the machine do the work. And then secondly, what you brought up, it's important to pick the right abrasive. Right. If you're doing a lot of flat sanding, paper's fine, it does a good job. But if you happen to hit a lot of edges, that's when I would go to the film because it's going to hold up better yeah. on the durability on the edges. Yeah, I know, um, you know, I... I very rarely ever um, go to paper, but I'm using film tech a lot. And then you have some foam abrasives and we'll talk about the foam abrasives here in just a minute, but those are like game changing abrasives in my mind. So we'll get into that in a little more detail here on another video. Sure.